second is sola Christo. Solo Christo, which is Christ alone. And this drives even deeper into the heart of the debate of the 16th century and the Reformation, for Christ Himself must be the object of our faith, for Christ alone, through His death upon the cross, has provided the only sufficient atonement to make a covering for our sins. After posting his 95 Theses, Luther engaged in various debates with church leaders. In April of 1518, there was the Heidelberg Disputation. In October of 1518, he had his famous interview with Cardinal uh, Cajetan, who was one of the higher-ups in the Roman Catholic Church over the very heart of the issue of the Gospel of Christ. In July of 1519 was his Lipsig debate with John Eck. In October of 1520, the Pope issued a papal bull against Luther. The word bull is Latin for seal, S-E-A-L, such as a seal affixed to an official document. And this papal bull demanded that Luther recant or face extermination out of the Roman Catholic Church. And it was amid this firestorm of the popes issuing this papal bull that Luther wrote three blockbuster books, one of which was entitled The Babylonian Captivity of the Church. In this polemic, Luther attacked the juggler vein of the Roman Catholic Church. He attacked the priesthood. He attacked the sacramental system by which Rome brings every person's act under the power of the priest. This sacerdotal system, Luther represented as the Babylonian captivity of the church and Rome as the whore of Babylon. Rome had established seven sacraments by which God's grace, God's favor, God's merit was earned. And the one who would have favor from God must participate in these various sacraments. The first was baptism as an infant. The second was confirmation as a youth. The third was marriage as an adult. The fourth was extreme unction on one's deathbed. And then there was also the taking of mass throughout one's life on a regular basis. And then there was also the penance to be received from the priest based upon one's confession of sin to the priest. And each of these were viewed as means of grace means by which saving grace would come from God to the sinner. It would come through the means of infant baptism, a confirmation class, a marriage, a extreme unction on one's deathbed, the taking of Mass, and the confession of sin to a priest. Each of these were seen and viewed as conveying grace. And Luther attacked the very evil of the priesthood. And he attacked the corruption of the gospel of Christ in this. Luther studied the Bible and said, No, all saving grace comes directly through Christ alone, independent of the priesthood, and independent of the sacerdotal system, and independent of all rites and rituals, Saving grace comes directly through Christ alone. Luther said, the cross alone is our theology, unquote. And so thus, believers should look to Christ alone and not to man, and not to priests, and not to a system, and not to the church. The bread and wine do not become the substance of Christ's body and blood. And with this, the whole Roman system of works came tumbling down before the very eyes of Rome 
the priesthood, the mass as sacrifice, the church as the sole dispenser of grace began to evaporate as the morning dew, as the truth of the cross and the truth of the work of Christ was preached by Luther and by the early reformers. And in this they taught that saving grace comes to each believer immediately through Christ and through no man mediator and not through the priest nor through the pope, but that each sinner is to go directly to Christ and confess one's sin to Christ and to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ For Christ alone is the mediator between God and man. At the end of his life, Luther said, I have taught you Christ purely, simply, and without adulteration. Luther went on to say that everyone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ is a priest unto God who has direct access to come before the throne of God above. There is no need to go to Mary in order to get to God. There is no need to go through the Pope or priest, but every believer in Jesus Christ is made a priest in the kingdom of God with direct access before the throne of grace. 1 Peter 2, verse 9, Peter writes to all of the believers... You are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood. Every believer who is elect by God is a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. There, there is no priesthood except the priesthood of every believer in the body of Christ. In Romans 1, uh, Revelation 1, in verse 6, Luther appealed to this passage. Christ has made us to be a kingdom, priest to His God and Father, unquote. This is to say that every true born-again believer is a priest unto God and has no need for any other priest to take him by the hand and walk him to God for he is a son and a daughter of God in the family of God who has direct access to God and any obstacles that are put in between are to be seen as a violation of the pure gospel of Jesus Christ. Luther, in his own words, said, quote, This is that mystery which is rich in divine grace to sinners, whereby... A wonderful exchange. He's talking about the cross. A wonderful exchange. Our sins are no longer ours, but Christ's. And the righteousness of Christ is not Christ's, but ours. He's talking about the exchange of the cross. That all of my sin was laid upon Christ. And His perfect righteousness now laid upon me and imputed to me. He receives the worst about me. I receive the best about Him. This is the wonderful exchange of the cross. Luther went on to say, Christ has emptied Himself of His righteousness that He might clothe us with it and fill us with it. And He has taken our evils upon Himself that He might deliver us from them." This is the very heart of the true gospel of Christ, that salvation is by faith alone in Christ alone. It is by faith alone, apart from any baptism, any human efforts, any church membership, anything that we would add to faith alone, And it is in Christ alone, apart from any priest, any pope, any religious leader, faith alone, in Christ alone. Herein is the true gospel of Jesus Christ.